Hey everybody, I am making this short video to help you set up your budget constraints. I do this mostly for my consumer theory stuff, like utility maximization. Uh, it, it happens in a couple of my videos, but I don't have a short one dedicated specifically to this, and I had a student make a request. So, here's a scenario. We, we can... So here's the general equation. We have an income level I, which we can spend on two goods. There's the price of good X times the quantity of good X plus the price of good Y times the quantity of good Y. Now, if I wanted to make this a higher dimension budget constraint, I could do something like this. I could say that I was equal to the sum from little i equals one to n of pi times qi. I, I could make this be as many dimensions as I want to. I'm not gonna bother with that in my intermediate micro class. Uh, maybe I'll haze you students better later, but for now, that's not what I'm doing. Uh, anyway, an example of our simple budget constraint with just two goods, that the income is equal to $100, and we can spend that money on, on hamburgers or socks. And the price of a hamburger is $4. And the price of some socks is $2. So what's our budget constraint going to look like? Well, we say that the income, we said the income, $100, is equal to 4, that's the price of a hamburger, times the number of hamburgers plus two, that's the price of socks, times the number of socks. Now let's say I want to graph this with hamburgers on the horizontal axis and socks on the vertical axis. The, the two points I need are the intercepts. If I want to find the sock axis intercept, I set hamburgers equal to zero. 100 equals zero plus two s S equals 50. So if I spend all my money on socks but not on hamburgers, I can buy 50 pairs of socks. If I want to find the hamburger intercept, I set my socks equal to 0. 100 equals 4H plus 0, which means that H is equal to 25. Now let's take a look at this line because maybe we want to convert this equation to something where we can compare it to an indifference curve. That's a lot of why we do this, after all. Uh, so I want to find the slope of this line. And maybe I know a fancy trick for doing it with those numbers, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. I'm going to talk about the full equation. Let's take this equation and let's rearrange it. You see, the vertical axis is the s variable. So normally we would make s be a function of h. So let's rearrange it by solving for s. 100 minus 4h equals 2s. s is then equal to 50 minus 2h. That equation is the equation for this line. Intercept of 50, a slope of negative 2. Now, a couple of things we can point out. We don't have to always have numbers to do this. I can tell you that the slope is always negative px over py. Why is that? Because I can rearrange my original equation in the same way. I can solve for my y variable. I'll have i minus px times x equals py times y, which gives us i over py minus px over py times x equals y. Now the slope of this will always be minus px over py. And the intercept will be i over py. Was that true in our numbers? Let's see, the price of our vertical axis was 2. i divided by 2, 100 divided by 2 is 50. We're good to go. And by the way, the horizontal axis intercept is i over px but I don't need to solve for that right now. Uh, I don't know how helpful this is. It's kind of short, and I'm kind of out of time. 
but hopefully it helps you make some sense of this stuff. Everything starts with this equation. Start there and know that sometimes you need to solve for y in order to get in order to get this graph. But if you just remember those two things, start with this equation, i equals the sum of the price times quantities, and then solve for your vertical variable, you'll be set. Everything else falls in place. It's just a little bit of algebra. So I hope this is helpful. If not, good luck anyway. Thanks for watching, guys.